Hey everyone, it's Jason here, and I promised you a review of the Even Realities G1 Smart Glasses. So, here it is. And yep, I'm wearing them right now, reading my notes as I speak to you. Now, this video took me a while to create, not just because I'm busy with my day job teaching web AI to the world, but because I really wanted to wear them almost daily for a month to put them through their paces. So, for all of you folk who don't last more than two minutes on any one video, what's the TLDR? Well, for a first generation product, it's got a lot of things right, and it might just be the best purchase of mine in the last five years. It's not often a product impresses me and exceeds my expectations these days, but this actually does. This is the first pair of AR glasses that look normal and provide useful features that I would actually want to use versus other tech companies who are trying to put full colour displays in my face with tech that's not quite there yet and things that are huge and heavy and low battery life in varying form factors that no one wants to wear. Apple, are you watching? <laughs> now these G1 glasses of course are not perfect but it does achieve what they said they would be able to do and many of those minor points that I found can be solved with a software update as I'll talk about later on. Not to mention that this, to my knowledge, is the first product from this new startup. So to get so much right in a V1 is really incredible and hats off to the team, both the engineers and the designers who created it. This is the start of a great journey, but not the end. But with today's technology packed into a form factor as small as this, it's the most powerful and useful pair of AR glasses right now, to me at least, that I would actually consider using daily. And yeah, if you have a smartwatch, you can kiss that goodbye, as I think that is the form factor of the past, and these are the form factor of the future, for sure. Alright, so let's dive deeper. First up, the unboxing experience is great. You can tell designers have been heard here. This beautiful box is just off black in colour and has a slight texture to it, feels premium, and when you take off the top, all the sides fall apart and reveal this very stylish glasses in the case that protects and charges the glasses when I'm not using them. This is awesome, and I already knew this was going to be a great product when I saw this actual unboxing experience happen. Now lifting up the glasses cover that magnetically snaps to its rear reveals the smart glasses in all their beauty. When you pick them up for the first time, you can't help but notice the nice soft touch that they have to the material used versus the meta Ray-Bans that feel like a cheap child's plasticky toy in comparison. After you put them on, it tells you you need to go grab the app. So it's off to the races to download the app and go through the setup procedure, which is easy and just allows you to get acquainted with how to use the glasses and of course record your desired head tilt angle to activate them. One thing I've noticed at this point is that there's definitely a sweet spot for when you put it on your nose for optimum brightness and clarity. Now this is different for different users, but once you find it, you soon learn the best spot for you, and this is a minor one-off learning moment. The other thing I noticed is that the touch buttons on the glasses are located near the rear of the arms of the frame. This is not the best position for touching them, as hair can get in the way. I would recommend moving these to the top front of the glasses in the future, as I had issues having my touch registered until I had practiced with them for a few days. So you do get used to it, but this could be improved. Now in my first week of using the glasses, I found a few bugs while using a very old phone that I was using as a test device. And I would just like to say, after reaching out to Even Realities, they actually worked with me to fix those bugs on older devices within one week, and everything was then working fine. They actually care about the product and trying to make it the best they can be, which is a very different experience to what I've had with other larger companies that I've bought stuff from in the past. So consider me impressed. Now, what do I actually like? Well, I love that these glasses are not trying to be in your face forcing tech to be in every part of your living moment. Instead, they embrace concepts from invisible computing and they get out of your way when they don't need to be showing you data and just become a regular pair of glasses, allowing you to be more present in the real world and less glued to your smartphone. Now, I feel that my smartphone is being used less after wearing these as the main reason I pick up my phone is to check if I missed anything important on the notifications. 
I also like how they're focused on doing a few things very, very well versus trying to take on the whole world like fan companies are trying to do, packing tons of tech resulting in bulkier designs. And what are the things that it does well? Well, let's dive into each key feature on the device. First up, navigation. Navigation is a killer feature and I would buy a pair of these just for that feature and the ability to read my phone notifications alone. Having been one of the alpha testers of Google Glass back in the day, navigation was one of my favourite features back then and once again it's proved its use to me in this form factor too. I can be out and around the city riding my bike and not have to look down at a physical phone, potentially not seeing traffic changing direction. This is so useful and makes my life safer too. Next up, as I mentioned, you can see some or all of the notifications from your phone, at least on Android. I don't own any Apple products to test on there, but for Android, it works perfectly. Now, while this is a cool feature, you don't fully appreciate how much you need it until you've tried it. So picture this, I was standing on the stairs talking to a work colleague and I got a chat message from someone who had arrived early for lunch and I was waiting for me to meet them down in the lobby. Now without these glasses, I likely would have ignored the vibration in my pocket. Instead, I saw this while I was in the middle of my other conversation and realized I needed to be somewhere else without being late. So useful. You can customize which apps allow notifications to propagate through to the glasses, which is perfect. All right, next up is teleprompting mode, which is what I'm using right now, reading you my speaker notes. This was one of the main reasons I bought the glasses because I give a lot of presentations in my job and I'm fed up of so many venues putting presenter notes on the floor below your feet so you can never look at the audience in the eye and connect with them better. Let me tell you, this teleprompter works better than I expected. It uses AI to automatically advance the speaker notes if you desire and even if I miss the odd word, it figures out where I am and it actually works. This is a brilliant piece of tech if you're a developer advocate or frequent presenter and is totally game changer. The only improvement here is to make this work offline as often speaker venues have terrible Wi-Fi which should be possible with a software update. Now there's plenty of on-device AI models capable of doing speech recognition in real time and even realities. Ask me if you're curious how to do this as on-device AI is literally what I represent for a living. All right, now to get onto the next feature real-time translation. I had someone speak to me in Spanish and I could actually make sense of what they're saying. That being said, you need an active internet connection to do this and we all know how translate can be a bit hit and miss at times. Now I don't know what API they're using but I'm pretty sure this can be made better with time as better AI models come out for translation. And of course if I used AI on device then you wouldn't even need an internet connection for that feature and users could choose whatever models they wanted. Which brings me on to another main feature of the glasses, the even AI LLM that you can talk to. And again, I'm unsure what they're actually calling behind the scenes, but this is basically good for factual information like why is the sky blue? And it sure does know the answer, which you can then read on the screen as it scrolls through the pages of text generated. However, if you ask it what the weather in San Francisco is, it pretty much hallucinates an answer and it's clear that it's not as good as say Google Gemini that also leverages the knowledge graph and other real-time data from search to give you a correct answer for a question like that. Again, in this case, it's just a simple software fix. They could just change the API to call Google's Gemini API instead. I personally, as a developer, would like this to be a user choice to decide what LLM I want to use with some of my existing subscriptions, which might be cloud-based. As for offline situations, a smaller LLM can be bought on device and still have comparable smarts to what they have now. Google's Gemma 2 model is a great example of this. Finally, there's also the Quick Notes feature that allows you to record 30 second notes that gets transcribed and displayed on your notes section of the glasses display. While this is sort of useful, I almost never use this feature and would prefer to customize the other content to be displayed on my dashboard like stock market tickers or whatever is useful to the user, everyone's going to be different. All right, so now I've covered the software features, what are they like to wear and use day to day? Well, they're lightweight and comfortable, so no issues there. I also value long battery life. 
They quote 1.5 days for typical usage, and in my testing on full brightness, I get roughly a 4% drop in battery per hour, which gives me around 25 hours of usage. Now with adaptive brightness, this performs slightly better, but unless you're going to be indoors all the time, the glasses will be using the max brightness outside, so then you can see the text properly. That being said, 25 hours with normal usage, meaning the screen is not always on during that time, is plenty for me and I have no worries when giving a presentation that they're going to run out of battery life versus some of the other products on the market that just have a couple of hours. Now on the subject of being outside, if you want to use these outside, use the shades. And I'm going to put them on right now. One second. There you go. Now, as I bought these on pre-order, I got them for free, but if you're ordering them today, then make sure you add the shades. Not only do they look pretty cool, so everyone thinks you look like someone from the Matrix, they're actually pretty much required if you plan to use the glasses outside in sunlight. Else it's very hard to read the text against certain backgrounds. This is fine though, if you've got the shades attached, so make sure to get those. One other thing I noticed when out and about is that walking and reading takes a moment to get used to as the text will vibrate with your body movement. Now in a V2 or maybe even in a software update if the device has an accelerometer, it'd be great to have some kind of image stabilization to reduce the effect of walking on the text vibration so it's easier to read when in motion. Again, this is a nitpick. I can totally use these and read whilst walking outside once I get used to this, but it would be a smoother experience if some dampening was built in when walking was detected to compensate for that vibration. Next, I would just like to say, people don't realize that these are smart glasses. Colleagues ask me what they are because they love the design, which is very cool. But in their mind, when they actually tried them on, they were not expecting to see text on the display that I've been seeing the whole time whilst talking to them. Now, I love that these blend into real life and do not scream tech product to anyone on the street. So. What's my feedback for even realities if they're watching? Well, congratulations on an amazing first gen product. You should be proud of yourselves. I've worked in the industry for over 20 years now in tech, and this for me feels like the start of the Apple of smart glasses, at least to me. While you likely have to compete with people like Meta in the future, their recent demo is still not quite as elegant as your form factor because they're not quite ready for prime time in those devices. At some point though, you'll likely need to add a color screen or such to your V2 device, but by then it might be possible to do that in a similar form factor to what you have today. So I believe you're using the right tech for the right time today to produce something useful that people will actually use in public. That being said, please, please, please allow developers to write web apps that can control the glasses via Bluetooth Low Energy, so we can provide custom tasks to enhance future capabilities of the glasses faster than you can do by yourself. And why web? Well, I don't want to run arbitrary code from third-party developers natively, and JavaScript is used by 70% of the world's developers and has the ability to talk to Bluetooth devices via web BLE. You can then engage with popular creations to integrate those as a base offering in your native app to improve your product. Now, I already know how I'd use my knowledge of web AI to give these glasses vision ability, even though I don't have cameras built in. As just one example, if you could give me access to the screen, allow the microphone to be connected to my phone so I can use it via JavaScript's Get User Media API, and of course, to know when a touch up or touch down event has fired on one of the buttons. Also, for your teleprompter ability, please integrate with Google Slides speaker notes, which allows me to pass a deck URL that's public from which you can then grab the speaker notes and ingest that into your app, as it takes me a long time to copy my notes over otherwise. So, in summary, I believe that this is the Apple of AR glasses in the making right here. I've tried Meta Ray-Bans and they feel plasticky to the touch versus the nice soft touch that these have. These little design decisions often go overlooked by other companies, but this attention to detail is what makes them stand out and just feel right. I for one prefer the better design of the Even Realities G1s, even at the sacrifice of some of the extra sensors and display capabilities you might get in larger form factors. I'd rather have a better battery life with a mono color display like this to do a few things very, very well and wait until those other sensors and displays get smaller and are less power hungry. 
So congratulations to Even Realities. You've made a great V1 product and I'm excited for the future of the space. And to my fellow followers watching this video, I'd hereby like to predict the death of the smartwatch in several years from now. Yep, you heard it here for the first time. I believe we'll also have less screen time on smartphones as smart glasses like these become more prevalent, allowing people to be more present in their real lives, which is a really great thing for us humans. It's time to reconnect with the real world around us. That being said, if I put my time traveling hat on further into the future, I believe the smartphone will eventually have no screen and instead smart glasses will be the screen to your smartphone and laptop as display technologies get better which is great for privacy so no one in the coffee shop can actually see what you're working on. And if you take this one final step into the future, eventually you'll have just a pair of smart glasses and all other devices merge into that, other than maybe a good trusty mechanical keyboard for old gits like me who don't want to be typing in the air uh, with hand tracking. So thanks for watching and if you enjoyed the review, consider adding me over on LinkedIn to hear about the latest in web AI, tech and innovation generally and of course, I'll see you next time.